for a little run here and I thought I would turn on the camera. It's been a little while since I filmed. To be honest, I wasn't feeling that motivated to do it and I only pick up the camera if it feels genuine and authentic to me. And the past few weeks, it just hasn't. Uh, if it even has been a few weeks. I also haven't been really running a lot since I've been resting after the marathon. And it was only, well, so I tried running about a week after and that just did not go well. I didn't feel too good. So now we're like two weeks uh, out from past the marathon and I tried running again yesterday and it felt decently good. Um, so yeah, let's head out now. now so let me show you guys I did uh, film a little bit of the process of making it but this is my chocolate oats so it's just oatmeal with cocoa powder mixed in and I added soy milk along with water and flax seeds then you cook that microwave it chopped up some strawberries some bananas now the key is that when it comes out of the microwave, you add some chocolate chips on top, probably mini ones. I find it really mixes well in on top of the hot oats, gets all melted. And then we add some chopped walnuts on top as well. So I'm just gonna eat this now, sitting on my patio right now. It's still a little, little chilly outside, but you know, we're getting, getting to that spring weather, I think. So I did two miles this morning and it's funny, things are kind of in reverse right now. Yeah, so I feel like I did things in reverse because normally I film my breakfast and then my run, but today I did run then breakfast. So yeah, I think I'm fully recovered now in terms of, you know, post marathoning how I'm feeling and yeah, it just took like two weeks to get there. But I was patient, you know, it, it's always different. I've had times where I take three weeks completely off from running and sometimes a little less, generally not a week. I don't know why I thought after a week I would be okay to run, but I, I was not. So yeah, I did a lot of walking last week, which was good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna eat this now. That's all I have to say for now. Okay, so we're at the library now. Started coming here about a few months ago uh, after I moved somewhere new and I realized I wonder if I could get a library in this area because I've always loved libraries, they're just really peaceful spaces for me, and I do love to read, so yeah, gonna see what I find in there. I have some books to return. This library is kind of cool, it actually has a cafe inside of it, so I'm thinking of getting a coffee, so yeah, let's go try it.
continues. We're now at Dick's Sporting Goods and I am looking for a cute bag that I saw online and once in person at another location of theirs. So I didn't buy it because I have a gift card that I was waiting to have on me to get it. So I'm going to go into this one and hopefully they have it. Done with the store. They did have the bag that I was looking for. That was exciting. Super cute. And I actually got a few other things because like I said, I had a gift card for about $150 and I hadn't even used it. It was from Christmas. So yeah, I got excited. I saw a few things I liked. Let me show you. Maybe later I'll do a try on for you, but I got these cute shorts. They kind of made me think of confetti, the pattern on them. And then I got these running shorts, which are a nice salmon color that I don't own. And then they also had a matching top to go with it. Also cute. One nice thing about being small is I fit into the kids section stuff and that usually is cheaper. So all of these items aside from the bag were from the kids section. I think I spent about $97. I feel like it's pretty good for one, two, three, four items at a store like Dick's, which is pretty expensive generally. I wouldn't usually shop here unless I have a gift card or something like that because I just feel like paying full price for these brands is crazy. And I prefer to go to the thrift store and find pretty much the same stuff for a quarter of the cost. So I would say that's where a lot of like my running leggings are from or long sleeve tops that or just they're from races so yeah successful trip onto the grocery store and then i'm going home <laughs> pocket which I already tested it in the store if it would fit uh, the wallet I have and my phone and it did quite comfortably with extra room which is good because I do have a few other things I like to carry with me it has this nice front pocket too I feel like that goes down pretty deep so I think it's a stylish bag but functional as well and I mean how nice is it Hello, on today's segment of Cooking with Alyssa, we're going to be making some bagels. So it's been some time since I made them. I was reviewing the recipe to see what the process is like. Now where I live, getting bagels is very accessible because there's many bagel stores. I don't know, a few years ago I started realizing that, you know, as easy as it is to buy them, it's pretty easy to make them too and they taste even better than if you get them from the store even though the ones here are pretty high quality and I don't always have time to get to the bagel store or they're open at times when I'm busy or working or things like that so anyway we're gonna see what making bagels looks like on video here so let me take you through the steps I've already heated the water which is quite hot at the moment so you don't want to add your yeast too soon otherwise you could kill the yeast and it's really important that you don't um, put it in too soon and then we have to add some food because the yeast need to eat so we're gonna add some sugar to that and then we'll move on to the next step <laughs> Here we 
have our measuring cup filled with water, yeast, and sugar. Now you want it to look pretty fluffy and bubbly because then you know that the yeast is activated. So I can definitely tell at this point we're there. So just gonna pour this in like so. Got our bread flour here and the salt. Oh, we already have our teaspoon. So let's measure out two teaspoons of that. consistency that we should be going for here so this is what it looks like doesn't look like much yet but I can assure you that once all the flour has been added and combined that it will be a proper dough all the flour has now been added and let me show you how our dough is looking I was looking at the recipe. It said the way to know if it's ready is if you poke it and it bounces back at you. So we're at that point now. So next step is we're gonna put it into this bowl which I've greased with some oil and cover it, leave it to rise in a warm place. It says for about 60 to 90 minutes, you basically want it to double in size. And then we'll be on to next steps of forming them into the actual bagel shape. Okay, so we're back. The dough has now risen to a sufficient size. We're gonna take it out of this bowl. Perfect, okay. So as I was saying, we have beautiful, smooth, fluffy dough here. Give it a smell. Passes the sniff test, so we feel good about that. Now, I need to shape them into like the bagel, bagel, bagels. That is the word. And I'm gonna put them on a tray, I think, with parchment paper, because they will get baked eventually, so I'm gonna need that at some point. So let's do that. So. We're gonna divide our dough into some equal sizes. Actually, let me just take a look at the recipe. Okay, it says eight equal pieces. Doesn't need to be exact. So just take our bread knife and cut it in half. And then cut that in half. Now we have four, and then we're gonna cut each of these, I think. Wow, I'm not trying to be boastful, but this dough is good. I can tell it's gonna be perfect for what we're doing here. So, I'm just gonna give each one a little, little love, roll it around. Just like that. There, I definitely could make time for it, especially because I am not in marathon training right now, or really any specific type training. And maybe this is a good time to talk about that. So. We're now like nearly three weeks post Boston Marathon. I have run about three-ish times, I think. Yesterday was my longest run. I actually joined my running group, but I only did half the course. So I did just three miles. Everyone else was doing six, but it felt really good to like be around people and just you know, be outside again, running. I feel the most like myself when I'm running. So that was just really nice. I had a good time and I'm just gonna keep building. You know, I had 
I don't know. I had to work through some feelings after Boston. I had, you know, mixed emotions as I had shared in my previous video about like, you know, the success of it, whether, you know, what were the reasons that it didn't go as well as I would have wanted it to. But I think at this point, I'm just making peace with that. It wasn't the race I wanted it to be, and that's okay. Um, does it mean in the future I won't be able to have that opportunity? But for right now, it's just, that's just where it is, and that's fine. So moving forward, or looking forward, I should say, I am starting to plan out my summer racing schedule, spring, summer, and maybe early fall. I'm really excited and probably going to focus on getting back in touch with my speed and everything and just racing for the joy of it because I truly love to compete. It's a lot of why I run, even though I enjoy just regular running, which I am doing right now, but I love having a goal to work towards, so it's exciting having some races on the calendar now. Okay, so we have our little little ball things here. We're gonna just take one like so, and the way you make a bagel shape is that you just puncture a hole in the middle, like this. Okay, you just wanna like, it is gonna rise a lot, so if you don't make it big enough, it, the hole could close back up and then you just have a roll. Obviously, that's not what we're going for here because we're making bagels. So I want to be able to slice through them all nice and have that classic bagel look. So that's one. I'm just going to put it on our handy dandy tray that I've got set up over here. And we're going to repeat that process seven more times. And then we will be on to the next step. Follow along. We're at our next step, which is pretty much the final steps. I've got a pot of water boiling with some coconut sugar in it. The recipe suggests barley malt syrup, but I don't have that and I've never been able to find it in a store. So I usually just sub it out for coconut sugar or agave, whatever I have on hand. So we're gonna drop the bagels in. If you wanna add some toppings, that would be the time to do this once they come out of their water bath. I have some sesame seeds here, as well as some oats to make an oat type bagel. This process is gonna go pretty fast, so I'll probably just film it as I go along, not with too much narrating, but you get the gist. Then once they come out of their bath, they go into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And that's it. That's bagel making for you. So let's get started. side so I've got my tongs out so I can give them a good flip and then it's going to be over to this plate or topping station. guys are the ones waiting to go in.
in their bath. About to go into the oven. Hope they come out good. <laughs> today so I figured what better way to get some exercise in on an off day when it's beautiful out than to go for a walk. I've actually been doing a lot of walking lately since I'm not running nearly as much as I was but I'm really craving the time outside and just being active because that's what I'm used to. So I'm gonna close out the video now just figured I'd do it while out here it's looking really pretty right now light breeze comfortable though I'm in shorts and a t-shirt and it feels good anyway hope you enjoyed this video post marathoning what that's been looking for me lately and probably do some future videos with more uh, more focus on training since that tends to be what I like to show but yeah, this was just some random tidbits of what's been going on lately. So I will talk to you guys again soon and I hope you're all having a good week. Bye for now.